Good morning, church. We may not be able to meet in person right now. However, we can meet in the spirit together. For those of you who are watching and you don't recognize my face, I'm Reverend Sandra Platford. I'm the minister of Godalming Baptist Church. And I welcome you to this morning's Palm Sunday service. Before you begin, we are going to be taking communion during the service, so if you're able to go and get yourself some juice or some bread, um, or whatever you've got to hand, to be honest, um, then, because I know the shops are a bit short on some things, um, then please do fetch it, don't worry, and come back um, when you're ready, in a sense. But we're going to continue by opening in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the many different ways in which we continue to be church. So just because we're unable to meet in a church building together, this does not affect our identity in you. Today on this Palm Sunday, may we be reminded afresh of the truth of your word and may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Fill us with your abounding love and your Holy Spirit as we enter this time and this space. May our worship be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his home. I 
Our first reading is the story of Palm Sunday from John's Gospel, starting at but, sorry, John's Gospel, chapter twelve, starting at verse twelve. The next day, a great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, "Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the King of Israel!" Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him, and that they had done these things to him. This is the word of the Lord.
today is in the Celtic tradition. And I used this format early in this year, and I like the shape of the prayer. Join with me now. Circle us, Lord. Circle us, Lord. Circle our church with the light of the gospel. May we understand more of our faith and why we believe and live it. May we understand more about doubt, not be too hard on ourselves because of it. May we commit ourselves to you, not only in the public part of our lives, but also in the small unseen details of our lives and of our commitment to this fellowship and at this special time. Father, we ask that the people in the wider community around us might recognize in the life of this church and in our lives, something with which they want to be joined and lead them in. Circle us, Lord, keep light within, keep darkness out. Circle us, Lord, as we view the world outside our little patch here in Godalming. Let us acknowledge and bring to you the vast levels of injustice and misrule across the nations of the world. The migration of millions of people who are threatened with loss of life and who in their migration lose all the possessions they have in the world. Forgive us, Lord, that we are not welcoming to these people. Soften our heart, Lord, that we may be able to envisage offering them a welcome in our country, in our town, and acknowledging that we will, each of us, incur a loss of comfort and of lifestyle. Circle us, Lord. Keep generosity within. Keep darkness out. Circle us, Lord. Circle our nation with the values of your gospel. May the generosity of your presence infuse our national life with hope and encouragement, particularly as we face individually and collectively the COVID-19 virus pandemic. May we be effective in the community with the organizations we have in the light of recommended practice as the pandemic moves forwards. Circle us, Lord, keep hope and fairness within, keep despair out. Circle us, Lord, circle our family and friends with the love of your gospel. Keep them in peace and security. Guard those of our loved ones who are vulnerable. Strengthen those who are struggling with life. Encourage those who are on the brink of something new. And Father, we name these special people to you now. May the deep peace of the Prince of Peace keep them all. Circle them, Lord. Keep hope within, keep love within, keep danger out. Circle us, Lord. Circle the sick and the bereaved in your healing presence. There are some we know who simply are not well, some who are fearful, some in pain, some who are on their last journey. Circle them now, Lord, the very people we name in our hearts. Circle them in the healing presence of Christ. May the touch of Christ for them be a touch of wholeness and healing. Circle them, Lord. Keep peace within. Keep fear out. Circle us, Lord. Circle our hearts, our homes, our church, our town, our nation, our world. Circle us and never let us slip outside the embrace of your grace. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Our second reading today is from Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. 
he stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He sets the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the air nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread that sustains his heart. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the pine trees. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the conies. The moon marks off the seasons and the sun knows when to, shut, when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then man goes out to his work, to his labour until evening. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There are ships go to and fro, and the leviathan which you form to frolic there. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. May the meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord, but may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give me a minute, I'm still here. <laughs> I was really torn on what to preach upon today because I know that tradition can dictate that it's Palm Sunday and therefore you must preach on Jesus riding on a colt into Jerusalem with the crowds throwing down their cloaks before him and then waving their palm branches. But that isn't actually going to be my area of focus today, although I undoubtedly will touch on it. You know, we've been going through and are going through what people keep calling an unprecedented time, never known or never been before. And I want to focus on something that I know is going to help us to stay on track, to help us keep focus and to remain faithful, help us to be steadfast and help us not to lose hope in this time. And so I want to look at something what many are called the Hallelujah Psalms, or one in particular. And the reason that I am drawn to this, um, these Psalms is because of the lyrics of a song that I've been um, listening to recently. 
Now, it isn't one that we've sung in church, but some of you I know know it because I've put it up on Facebook and you've listened to it. If you have YouTube, you'll be able to um, go and listen to it for yourself. It's called Raise a Hallelujah, and it's by Bethel Music. Let me just share with you a few lyrics um, from the song. It goes like this. It says, I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. With everything inside of me, I raise a hallelujah. And the darkness will flee. These are amazing, amazing lyrics. It goes on to say, I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. And I raise a hallelujah because fear you've lost your hold on me. So what does this word hallelujah mean? It could be spelled in many different ways or alleluia. It's a transliteration of a conversion of text of the Hebrew word meaning let us praise Yah. Let us praise Yahweh. Let us praise God. And this is an expression used in Christian praise and worship. In some of the Psalms, hallelujah is an integral part of the song. For example, Psalm 135 verse 3. While in others, it simply is mentioned at the beginning or the end of the psalm or both, as in today's psalm, Psalm 104. The Hallelujah Psalms are found in three different groups, Psalm 104 to Psalm 106, Psalm 111 to 113, and 146 to 150. And do you know what I was thinking? If only we had some time on our hands, we could do a whole Bible study on these Hallelujah Psalms. Wouldn't that be amazing? The testimony of this song that I was talking about is extraordinary. Jonathan and Melissa um, Helzer of Bethel Music wrote it as a powerful declaration over the life of their friend's son, Jackson. Jackson's kidneys got infected with E. coli virus and he had to have a blood transfusion and he had to go on to dialysis. And because of this, Jackson's parents reached out to their church community for prayer and support. And a few days before Christmas, Jonathan received a text from their friends, Joel and Johnny Taylor, and they said that their son Jackson was in a critical condition and they didn't think that the child would make it. This is what Jonathan Helzer said. As soon as I got the text, I felt like this giant of unbelief stood in front of me. I thought Jackson was going to die tonight. We're not going to see the miracle. But something indescribable happened to the houses while they were praying for a miracle. A song suddenly um, raised up within them. It came out of their mouths and they started to sing a powerful declaration, a powerful declaration against the giant that Jackson was facing. And after much prayer, after much medical intervention, the Taylors finally received the miracle from God. And both the children, Jackson and his sister, who also became unwell and with the same infection, returned to full health and were able to return home to their family. And the truth is that there is great power behind praise and worship as we lift up our God in the midst of our storm. And during these unprecedented times, church, we need to raise our hallelujahs, much like the psalmist does in Psalm 104. The psalmist celebrates God's glory in his works of creation and providence, teaching the dependence of all living creatures and contrasting the happiness of those who praise God with the awful end of the wicked. You know, the opening verses of this psalm, we begin to see praise rising. The praise the Lord, my soul. The psalmist 
has a chat to his own soul and he encourages himself to raise a hallelujah. There are many times when I feel that I need to have a serious chat with myself, where I need to encourage myself not to be overwhelmed with the circumstances all around, especially as I watch the daily coronavirus update. And I'm sure that you too, at times, must need to have a little chat with yourselves. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So that you can focus on praising God during this time and raising your own hallelujahs. You know, what song has God placed in your heart right now for this season? The psalmist goes on to declare God's greatness, his splendor and his majesty. This psalm has been described as a poetic summary of God's creation of the world as found in Genesis 1. He speaks of light, he speaks of the heavens and the waters, the land and the vegetation, the sun, moon and stars, the fish and the birds, animals and man and the food that sustains them. The psalmist delights himself in the creator and in the way that creation witnesses to its creator. And I don't know about you, but when I was able to leave the house to take the dog for a walk, I began to notice things that I hadn't noticed before. Colours seem to be more vibrant. In the silence that has now been created, it is easier to become more aware of our surroundings. And I guess creation is witnessing to its creator right now, as it always has been, but maybe now more people are beginning to notice than before. There is no denying that God's act of creation deserves the praise of all people. In his praise, he is declaring God's character and commitment to all of creation. And in verse 2, we read that God wraps himself in light as with a garment. We're reminded in the New Testament, of course, in 1 John 1, 5, that God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. Not only is God light, but he is also the giver of light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, we read, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Because of Jesus, God's light shines in our hearts. And as Christians, we can be beacons of hope in the darkness. When I was preparing for today's message, there were a few things noted from this psalm. In particular, the words. Um, the words, sorry, let me catch up. The words, he made, he makes, and he set. He made, he makes, and he set. God is the one who made the moon mark the seasons. God is the one who made the sun know when to go down. God makes the clouds his chariot. God makes the winds his messengers. God makes the flames of fire his servants. It is God who makes the springs pour water into the ravines. And in doing so, it is God who quenches thirst. It is God who makes grass grow for the cattle. And it is God who plants, who makes the plants grow for the people to cultivate. God is the one who set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. God is the one who sets boundaries. Isn't God awesome? Isn't God, as the psalmist says, very great? There was another word that struck me towards the end of this psalm, and that word is when. From verses 26 to verse 30, it is in relation to all of the creatures. The psalmist says when. 
And I've just focused on a few of those words when. So he goes on to say, when God opens his hands, they are satisfied with good things. When God hides his face, they are terrified. When God takes away their breath, they die and return to dust. And when God sends his spirit, they are created and God renews the face of the ground. The psalmist recognizes that there are times when God opens his hands, when he hides his face, etc., etc. He recognizes the responses to God as well. And in doing so, this psalm it reminds us of exactly how formidable our God is. And in reminding us of this, it gives us a better perspective on life, even in these challenging, unprecedented times. You know, we need to be continually raising our hallelujahs, raising our praises to our God during this time. In saying this, it doesn't mean that we are not affected by our current situation. In encouraging this, it doesn't mean that we are in denial. It doesn't mean that we're not grieving with those who grieve, not at all. But what it does mean is that we are recognizing and we are declaring that our God is bigger than COVID-19. Our God is bigger than the enemy that we're facing right now. And even when we don't understand what is going on, and believe me, I'm not gonna pretend that I know what is going on or I understand what is going on. But even when we don't, we need to stand on the truth of God's word. And we need to hold on to his promises during this time. And we need to, at the same time, more than ever before, know exactly how big, how powerful, how faithful, and how loving our God is right now. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, Prince of Preachers, once said of praise, praise is the rent which God requires for the use of his mercies. Therefore, praise ought to have, have a prominent place in our lives. As it is due to God. Believers who continually praise the Lord pay their rent to God and those who don't are robbing him. He went on to say, that praise is the noblest part of our duty. It is not only due to God, but it's also beneficial to our souls. So what do you say, church? Can you raise a hallelujah? Can we raise our hallelujahs? Can we praise, can praise be constantly on our lips during this season? When we reflect on Palm Sunday, when we reflect on the crowds of the people who were shouting their hosannas as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, we know that the praises of those people were hollow and empty. They had no understanding who Jesus was, let alone what kind of savior or king he was. And within a week of shouting those praises, the very same people who turned their shouting from save us, save us, they turned their shouting to crucify him, crucify him. Let us not be like them. Let us not be like them. We are so blessed because we have God's word to hand. You know, we're so blessed because we know our God. We're so blessed because of Jesus and his sacrifice that we can have right relationship with God the Father. 
You know, we are so blessed because God's spirit, that same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells within each one of us. And we can continually ask God to fill us and fill us more with his spirit again and again. And we can indeed shout, praise the Lord, my soul, for you, you are very great. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. And one final thought. In Mark Schaffel's book, A Messiah Who Serves, Corrie Ten Boom was once asked if it were difficult for her to remain humble. Her reply was simple. This is what she said. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday on the back of a donkey and everyone was waving their palm branches and throwing garments on the road, singing praises, do you think that for one moment it ever entered the head of the donkey and that everybody was doing that for him? She continued, if I can be the donkey on which Jesus Christ rides in his glory, I give him all the praises and all the honour. This can only be the right response, church. Let's give him all the praises and all the honour. And now Pete's going to lead us in a response song in just a moment once I sorted out the computer as we reflect on what we've heard and we're going to sing together if you're able the splendor of the king thanks Pete thank you Sandra for that it's going to really use this as a prayer to say how great is our God this is how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all we see, how great, how great is our God, the splendor of the King, the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great! How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all we see, how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, age to age he stands. Time is in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, whoa, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God, and all we see, how great, how great is our God. As we sing name above all names, and we sing name above all names, worthy of all praise, my heart will sing. How great is our God. Thank you, Jesus. And we sing name above all names. Oh, Jesus, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God.
years ago. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And always see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great. If you have, um, if you've got your communion, your bread and your juice together um, ready, then we're going to partake in communion. But before we do, I'm going to just lead us in the words from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which the Apostle Paul tells of the institution of the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread and he said, he gave thanks. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also. After supper, saying, the cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father God, we thank you for these symbols of Christ's sacrifice for each one of us we thank you that when we look at the bread we remember his broken body and when we look at the juice we are reminded of christ's blood shed for each one of us we cannot thank you enough for all that you mean to us. We thank you that at this table we can find healing and wholeness. At this table all are welcome. At this table there is a level playing field. So Lord we just thank you. We give you thanks and we give you praise for all that you are and all that you've done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. sacrifice you became nothing but had to death many times I wondered at your gift of life and I'm in that place once again and I'm in that place and I'm in that place once again once again I look upon the cross where you died I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside Once again I thank you Once again I pour out my life There you are 
exalted to this highest place, King of all heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. And I'm full of praise, and I'm full of praise once again. Oh, once again I look upon the cross where you die. I'm humbled by your mercy, and I'm broken inside. Oh, once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross, my friend. We're going to sing it once more, thank you Jesus. Thank you for the cross, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend, oh Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross, my friend. Oh, once again, I look upon the cross where you die. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again, I thank you. Once again, I pour out my life. Once again, I pour out my life. Oh, once again, I pour out my Merciful God, as we come to the end of this service on Palm Sunday, and as we enter Holy Week, turn our hearts to Jerusalem and to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which we celebrate next weekend. Stir up within us the gift of faith, that we may not only praise Jesus with our lips, but we may follow him in the way that he asked. Father, I read recently the following prayer in response. Are you praying dangerous, audacious prayers? If you are not praying the kind of prayers that scare you, believe me, they are not scaring the enemy. We need Christians who believe for a life that makes a difference. We need to move from survival to revival. We in GBC had all sorts of plans to be in the town on Good Friday and Holy Saturday, which we cannot now pursue due to the COVID-19 virus situation. So I ask you, what are you going to ask God for in this coming week? A scary prayer that will make a difference for Jesus' kingdom here and in this place and beyond? I pray so. Amen.